If we're going to talk about finding terminal points for all these given t values, we need to make sure we know our unit circle. So let's go back real quick to some of the key points on the unit circle and then talk about how to travel around this thing so we can find terminal points and we can eventually find exact values again. The points that you just have to know from the unit circle, you have to know the intercepts. You have to know we start over here. That's labeled as a t value of 0 or 2 pi. Its terminal point is 1, 0. Opposite side, we have to know this is pi. Terminal point, negative 1, 0. Y-intercepts, we've got pi over 2. We know is 0, 1. We've got 3 pi over 2. We know that's 0, negative 1. So these are just the points that we've got to know. After you establish your intercepts, then we know everything pretty much as far as locating key values is concerned on the unit circle. Everything revolves around the uh, first quadrant. So if you look at the first quadrant, you've got three key values there. We've got pi over 6, you've got pi over 4, you've got pi over 3. As long as you can keep those straight, you'll be able to figure out terminal <coughs> points in any other quadrant. So for pi over 6, our ordered pair for pi over 6, our terminal point there is root 3 over 2 and 1 half. For pi over 4, it's root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. And for pi over 3, it's 1 half, it's root 3 over 2. If I'm taking a test over this, maybe this is something I sketch out somewhere on my test so it's convenient to refer to. Right, because this is all the key stuff. If you got this much down, it's just a matter of how you travel around the circle and what quadrant you're in. So we go back now to talk about terminal points. And we start with terminal points where uh, t equals negative 3 pi over 2. Since it's over 2, we know that that's going to be some sort of intercept point. If it's over 3, over 4, or 6, you know, then we're talking about those first quadrant values being of... Uh, use to us. But if it's over 2, it's going to be an intercept point. And since it's negative 3 pi over 2, remember that's where we start over here. Negative means we're going to travel clockwise. And if it's negative 3 over 2, I'm thinking negative 1 and 1 half if I divide that out. Starting at my point here, halfway around, that's going to be 1. Another half is going to take me up here to the top. So that's going to be that y-intercept, and at that y-intercept, that was the point 0, 1. So terminal point 0, 1 when t equals negative 3 pi over 2. For the next one, if t is 17 pi over 4, since it's over 4, if you want to start building the terminal point, you can. Because again, anything over 4, we're using this root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2 combination. The only question becomes, what's the signs on the x and the y value? So you take your 17 fourths out of this 17 pi over 4. We divide the 17 fourths. We get 4 and 1 fourth when we divide. So if halfway around the circle is 1, all the way around is 2. We're going around twice, basically. That's 4, right? 1 fourth is going to put you up here in the first quadrant. So one-fourth the distance, you've got to travel to the other side. If you're in the first quadrant, everything's positive. So we've got our terminal point. Okay, the last t value, you've got negative 10 pi over 3. So if it's over 3, go back to your unit circle. Look to see what's over 3. Well, let's see. What's over 3? You've got 1 half and root 3 over 2 as your ordered pair. We fill those in to start building our, our terminal point. Since it's negative 10 pi over 3, we've got to go clockwise around the circle when we travel. If I take the negative 10 thirds out and divide, it's negative 3 and 1 third. So starting here, halfway is 1, another half 2, another half 3. So I'm over here for negative 3. 
one third is the distance I have to travel to the other side. That is not over halfway, so that puts me somewhere over here in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, your x values are negative, your y values are positive. So there's your terminal point for C. All right, so if we know how to find a terminal point, we use that to help us find exact values of trig functions. So if I'm finding the exact value for the sine of 2 pi over 3, start with the 2 pi over 3 since that's what you're plugging into the function. Figure out the terminal point that goes with 2 pi over 3. Anything over 3 brought to us by the unit circle is going to have an ordered pair of 1 half and root 3 over 2. As far as 2 pi over 3 is concerned, just being 2 thirds, if we're starting here, 2 thirds the distance to the other side takes me to the second quadrant, meaning x is negative, y is positive. So if you're showing any kind of work on this type of problem, your work probably looks something like that. Sine, by definition, goes with the y value. So if we know what the point is, we take the y value from that point, that's our answer. That's our exact value. The next one, we're finding cosine of 7 pi over 4. So once again, start with the value that you're plugging into the function. Start with 7 pi over 4, since it's over 4. Terminal point consists of values, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. 7 pi over 4. If you divide out 7 fourths, you get 1 and 3 fourths. So I start here, halfway around 1, 3 fourths the distance I got to travel to the other side puts me over halfway, which is down here now in the fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. Cosine, by definition, goes with the x value, the x value at your terminal point. So our x value is root 2 over 2. That's our answer. Okay, part C here, we're finding tangent, just kind of working our way through all the functions. So we look at the value being plugged into the tangent, negative 9 pi over 2. It's over 2, so that means we've got an intercept point. Um, for this one, go straight to my little mini unit circle. If I take 9 divided by 2, I get 4 and 1 half. So we're traveling a negative direction. I'm starting right here. Well, 4 is going to take you around the circle two times, right? And then one half more from this point is going to take me down here. So my terminal point would be 0, negative 1 at that y-intercept. Now tangent by definition is y over x. So I'm going to take my y, I'm going to divide by my x. And the answer I'm going to get is undefined. So yeah, for this one, this one don't work so well. The tangent of negative 9 pi over 2 simply does not exist. So we're finding cosecant now. Cosecant of 19 pi over 6. All right, one thing worth noting, guys, is when you're uh, taking these values, you're plugging into the function especially as the values get bigger with the numbers we're dealing with. Make sure everything is reduced for what you're plugging in. Okay, in this case, everything's reduced, but just something to be aware of. If it's over 6, as an ordered pair, something over 6, we'd have root 3 over 2, we'd have 1 half for starters. Figuring out where 19 pi over 6 is so we can get the signs right on our terminal point. Take 19 divided by 6, you get 3 and 1 sixth. So I'm starting here, 
There's one, there's two, there's three. One sixth the distance to the other side puts you down here in quadrant number three. So everything is negative. For the cosecant, a few ways we can do the cosecant, but the preferred way, let's go with here. The preferred way would be knowing cosecant has a reciprocal of sine. Okay? Sine goes with y, so this would be the y, but cosecant's the reciprocal. So take the reciprocal, which would be just negative 2. So cosecant of 19 pi over 6 is negative 2. Moving on to secant. Secant of negative 5 pi over 6. So something over 6, ordered pair, root 3 over 2 and 1 half. We're talking negative 5 sixth here. Got my starting point. Negative means go, it goes in a clockwise direction. 5, 6 would be the distance I'm traveling to the other side. So it's not quite to the other side. It's pretty close. But basically, we're in quadrant 3. Both are negative values. To figure out the secant, recall that secant's reciprocal is cosine. Cosine goes with x. So take the reciprocal of x. Flip your x value, there you go. As far as leaving the root on the bottom, I'm fine with that. All right, so we complete our little tour here of all the functions with cotangent. That's your cotangent of negative 8 pi over 3 over 3, set up the ordered pair, got 1 half root 3 over 2. Talking negative 8 thirds here, let's see, that divides to negative 2 with the remainder of 2, right? So negative 2 and 2 thirds. Got my circle going in a negative direction starting here. Negative 2 takes you all the way around. Two-thirds the distance to the other side puts you over halfway to the other side. It puts you in quadrant three. Everything's negative again. And cotangent, by definition, is x over y. Or if you want to think reciprocals, yeah, it's the reciprocal of tangent. So you could figure out what y over x is and flip it. But here it's just easier to go x over y. You got your negative one-half over your negative root three over two. You cannot have fractions within a fraction in your answer. You have to simplify that down. So denominators should cancel out, and in this case, the signs cancel out. You're left with 1 over root 3 as your exact value for cotangent. How do we find a reference number? Well, if we, uh, if we have a denominator present that we're awfully familiar with from the unit circle. For instance, these two, right? We know we got some values from the unit circle that we're playing with there. The reference numbers for those are just going to be pi over those denominators. It's that simple if you have denominators you are already familiar with from the unit circle. Now this 5 for this first one, we can't just conclude that it's going to be pi over 5. We can conclude that it's going to be some kind of pi over 5. We're just not real sure what else goes on top. So the way we figure out what else goes on top, we set up a little unit circle. Kind of like we were doing before trying to identify the quadrants we were in um, with the terminal points. We take our 33 divided by 5 for part A here, which would be what, 6 and 3 fifths? 
If I'm starting here and I'm going around six, that's going to take me around the circle, what, three times? So I'm right back here. Three-fifths the distance I travel to the other side is over halfway to the other side. That puts me right here, over here somewhere in quadrant two. What a reference number represents is that shortest distance I need to travel to get to the x-axis from the current point that I'm at. So if this is the current point that I'm at, this is that shortest distance to travel to the x-axis. What is that distance? It's two-fifths. It was three-fifths to get to here. It's another two-fifths to continue on. So 2 pi over 5 would be the reference number. <coughs>